You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm Miriam Joir. <laughs> and this is CES Live. Yay. Welcome back. You've been going at it, Miriam. Uh, yeah, you know, for like most, hours. I just high do it. I never stop. I just, I've been just hanging out over there. I and know. Eating banana nut bread. Why not? But you've you've been going at it all morning, right, or something? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. So. That's that's true. We take turns. <laughs> well, we are back for one more hour of CES Live, and it has been an amazing day, full of cool gear, cool gadgetry. Uh, we're doing something a little different this year uh -huh. and uh, doing a panel. So we've yeah. got obviously Miriam uh, from Mobile Nations, we've got Mike from Tom's Guide, and we've got Adam from Connectedly. Yay. So uh, everybody has been talking about connected devices, uh, specifically wearables and fitness. So we're going to talk all about that here shortly. And to, uh, if you guys have questions, be sure to chime in in the chat room, geekbeat.tv slash CES live. Yep. But before we do that, there's a little something over here. Uh, we've all been, well, some of us <laughs> have been riding the Ego Ricos around all day. <laughs> so and much fun. playing with them. <laughs> Now, Mike, you haven't had a chance to. I've been walking all day. Shame. What, 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 what was I thinking? Savage. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. But Adam, you got two. I did, bit. yeah. Actually, I probably spent the majority of my day yesterday riding the scooters <laughs> around outside because there was nobody here. So we just kind of cruised around down to the other halls and back and forth. Tons of fun. And I'm mad that there's so many people here today because there's not enough room to ride them around. So <laughs> yeah. it's a little disappointing, but I love them. What about you, Miriam? Yeah, what was it, two or three days ago when we first moved all the gear in here? And forklifts everywhere. I was dodging forklifts. <laughs> you know, like nobody cared. Nobody cared. It was like yeah. no security. I expected for sure some so security. Like, wait, 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 wait! You can't do that. No, no. It was like a toy <laughs> child in a toy store. I had a great time. That's I did awesome. not fall, thankfully. You did? No, Good. but I, I have to not say, yet. like I think he got more seat time so far now because I, I only got like maybe. A total I don't want to use up all my credits. Minutes. Right. I, I walked all day yesterday. I, so um, didn't even ride it yesterday. Well, I think uh, the, these are electric scooters that go 20 miles an hour. Uh, John P has gotten them up to 25. Actually, earlier cool. in the day, John took it to the hotel room uh -huh. and he took a picture in his hotel room right before he came back to CES and he uh, then tweeted it out, came to CES and it was like a 15, 20 minute ride on the Eco Rico. And you spend that just waiting in line at the tram sure. station, sure. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or for a cab or anything like that. So you definitely have to give it a try. <laughs> I, do. I know you've been busy. He's like ready to go right now. He's, he's like, like, let he's me go. I'm out here. We're going to get him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just ride back and forth behind you guys the whole time. <laughs> but you know, there's a problem with, uh, with the Eco Ricos in that they won't get our activity trackers going. Right, exactly. And yeah. our fitness bands going. Uh, so let's talk about that as, a, as an industry here today. Um, it is kind of the hot topic, wouldn't you guys say? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Um, the, the state of wearables, let's... <sighs> everybody has a wearable. <laughs> I have gone through two halls only mm -hmm. here at CES so far, and I'm just seeing them all over the place. And of course, there are many, many more halls to go through at CES. Oh. It never ends. I, Every time I you think you're done one hall, they add another one. <laughs> <laughs> they do, or five. <laughs> I mean, I remember last year, there was just one little area right over here mm -hmm. of, with wearables, and now it seems to have taken up the entire SANS uh, convention space. Yes. Yeah, I think so. it was just the smartwatches last year, you know, there was like the little thing, and there were mm -hmm. maybe six or eight of them, but now in the SANS, the, you know, they have a whole section for wearables and it's fitness trackers and smartwatches, and, you know, and they're into clothing and all kinds of stuff now. So it's even just the year since we've been here, it's totally blown up and it's pretty overwhelming. For but sure. what do you guys think about how it's blown up like that? Does it feel like everybody's doing the same thing or are there some standouts? Well, I think it's really interesting, even at this early age, there's uh, a real uh, segmentation among different types of fitness trackers. Yeah. You have high-end ones, such as smartwatches, like the ones we're wearing, um, then there's mid-range ones, and then there's just basic activity trackers that are 
you know, as cheap as $50. Right, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then there's like specialized devices like the Garmin watches, mm -hmm. which are, you know, not fitness specifically, but they're for people who are, you know, outdoors, who are going to be right. hiking for a week long. They, have they want to track stuff, they have GPS. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think there are specialized wearables like that that may look like a fitness tracker or watch, but are actually specific. And I think, you know, he's right. Like there's all these, this, this ecosystem. And, but I do think there's one thing that is, you know, come to power, basically come to power this past year is smartwatches because of the introduction of Android Wear and Apple Watch has really come to the forefront of people's minds. And I think the the the, the fitness tracker as we used to know it, like the, just the band with just maybe an LED on it is a dead beast, right? Like I think it's, uh, it's, is it? it's because yeah, I think it is. Out. I'll tell you why, because it's not smart. And software defines everything. Uh, you know, my Pebble, which I'm not wearing today, and, so, and your Pebble right there, you can just install an app on that and turn it into whatever ecosystem of a uh, smart band you want. Yeah. So you can turn it into a Jawbone app or a uh, Misfit Shine just by putting an app on it. And that's a huge deal, I think. To me, that's that's, I think wearables need to be smart. They can't just be a dumb thing you wear because otherwise, you know, you know people have been wearing some, some sort of like electronic base, bracelet for years, right? Like that well, you do say it needs to be smart. And, and actually, Eric uh, Eidman on Twitter uh, said earlier, because we've been talking about wearables all day, he said, you know, it's, it, let me quote, just because <laughs> you can strap it to your body does not necessarily mean it's a wearable. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that is kind of a common theme these days with things getting smarter, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so you think it, they all need to get smarter, and of course that's the natural movement in technology is towards that smart development. Uh, what about you guys? Any differing opinions? I'm looking for some I, argument I, here. Come I, on. I still think <laughs> I, I think there's I think there's still going to be a place for the dumber version. The dumber, I wouldn't call it. All of them dumber, but they're <laughs> simpler. But they're going to be a commodity, I think. I think you'll be able to buy them oh, at, in blister packs at 7-Eleven, and you won't have to adhere to an ecosystem. It'll just basically be a thing, probably without even any connectivity that just gathers data. It depends what you want. I mean, I tried out one. I figured what it was called, but it, it wasn't didn't even have any Bluetooth or anything. I mean, it, it straps on your wrist, and then you, you pull it off, and it's and got USB a, on it, yeah, yeah. a 3.5 millimeter, and you plug it into your, your, I think it's only supported by the iPhone, and it syncs your data that way. You know, but it, it has a battery life of like three weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, but if you're just looking to track your track your steps and your runs and things like that, you know, something's good. But for if you want something more, then you're going to get a Moto 360 or like a Fitbit Surge or something bigger that has more of an offering. So I, I think, think if it's not connected, it can't integrate with other devices and the cloud. It's not going to mm -hmm. be smart. It can gather data, sure. but it doesn't really help you very much. Yeah, and I, I think there's still a place for them. I mean, there's people that you know you don't want to say that smart things for smart people and dumb things for dumb people because they're not dumb people. They just no, they not don't, dumb they don't have the high needs. You know, they dumb don't devices need, is what I call it. It's like the flip yeah, phone exactly. is a perfectly usable device, sure. but it it doesn't have you know the kind of level of connectivity right. and app ecosystem. But perhaps smartphone. those dumb devices, as you say, are better for yeah. the oh kids' yeah. market. That's what I'm saying. Know, blister like pack that at 7 they don't need. Blister pack at 7 Come I mean, on, you lose it, you get another one. Right. Right. And But the friction there is that you have to undo it, take it off, and plug it in to sync it. Sure. Or maybe Bluetooth, very unlikely, although the prices are coming down. And But the advantages you gain is battery life. So then you don't want to take it off because of battery life, which <laughs> is great. <laughs> so what we need to do is get the smart wearable devices to have battery life like the Withings uh, yes. watch here that mm -hmm. is eight months with a disposable cell, which is really amazing. And and it has the sensors ah, it needs, <laughs> so it's smart and connected because it has the sensors it needs to gather the data. So it replaces the band you would wear alongside your watch. Uh, and that to me is the wave of the future. Or who was it that announced this? At, I think it was announced at CS. Uh, a strap for their high-end regular watch that was a data strap. Hmm. Yes. Really? I, I don't didn't know see who that did one. that. Uh, it's one of Adam, the watch I totally wrote it watch like two brands. days ago. And it <laughs> Tag Heuer. Yes. Oh, okay. Tag Heuer. Okay. Yeah, there was a couple. There was one a couple weeks ago, too. They, that was, and you basically strap it on any watch that you're wearing. So, whether you, you know, if you have an expensive timepiece and you want it to be a smartwatch, you can snap it on the bottom there. But it's interesting because I always, I, I know it's kind of bad, but I always use my wife as the comparison, you know, because I like all the geeky things and the super smart things. And she likes the basic things that just do what she needs them to do. So, she was, uh, Fitbit Flex user because it didn't, you know, it didn't have any smart things on it. It tracked her steps. It did what it needed to do. It tied into her Bluetooth. Um, you know, all she had to do was remember to take it off and charge it. But her phone told her she needed to charge it. You know, but she didn't need the notification. She didn't need to install any software, or have any apps or anything like that. So, 
you know, I think there's definitely a place for all the products sure. right now, but I think eventually, if it keeps going at this rate, then it's going to get um, a little whacked out. So, um, all right, you know what? We're just going to break down. The, time on here. We're so. going to break down the barriers here because we have a little uh, mic issue. So I'm oh. just going to uh, have you. Oh, not anymore. Not anymore. It fixed? I'm good. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> you Mag said Mike is mad. Magic behind Fix the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Mike. Thank you, sir. Uh, that is Mike Dave is back on the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Fix, like <laughs> fixing <laughs> everything on the fly. Mike's on the mic. Or I could just I just go really close like this. There you go, there you go. <laughs> everything gets out of whack. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting that's, really friendly out of here. terrible. <laughs> so We're out of control. <laughs> we do need a break. Cut it, cut it. <laughs> All right, so you guys have mentioned, all, all of you have mentioned mm -hmm. apps uh, and that ecosystem. Uh, obviously with, uh, probably, would you say Apple is the one with the most apps that are, that are that's coming out with that full ecosystem? I mean, because Samsung came out, they were one of the first ones with apps on their device, but it's kind of limited, so where's that going? I mean, I actually I think Pebble still has a lead in this category. Pebble. I mean, it's I think last count over three thousand or so. Five, it's five. five. Last, oh, yeah. is it really up to yeah. five? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. That's, that's okay. Okay. I, like, yeah, I don't oh. only know this because they, <laughs> I only know this because they just announced it last week yeah. publicly. Mm -hmm. So uh, no, it's five thousand apps. But the thing about apps to me is it's it's good and bad. There's a friction point with apps, right? Uh, I, I love the way Android Wear does its app updates, where it's, it's bundled with the main app on your phone. You mm -hmm. don't really have to worry about it. With Pebble, you don't really have that, and that's a real. That's, I think it's a real hassle, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that it's not more. It's not so much apps because in terms of fitness apps on your phone, yeah. I think Apple wins, right? Like you look, Withings only works on iOS right now. Right. They're working on Android. Uh, like the other earlier, the, therm the thermostat we were looking at only works on iPhone right yeah. now, like et cetera, et cetera, right? So I think iPhone, iOS apps are still the majority for fitness uh, ecosystem, but it's really about ecosystem. It's really about, like one of the things I love again about the Android ecosystem is that my phone gathers data, but when my Android Wear device is on my wrist, it also gathers data, and together they gather data into Android Fit. So now I have more data, which might not be a good thing, but if done right, could potentially give me more accurate information. And I think that's what I mean by smart. Mm -hmm. And that's where the connected stuff really wins. Or if I change watch, I don't have to reconfigure anything. I might have a dress watch for the night, a better watch. So investing into an ecosystem is going to be even more important than apps. Are we getting too much information with all these apps though? Yeah, that's my question. I mean, because part of the reason I don't wear Android Wear is because, you know, I love Google now. I use an Android device on a daily basis, but a lot of it's in my face. You know, I want my text messages and my phone calls and my emails, but I don't have any of my Google Now notifications coming to my to my watch. I don't work out a heck of a lot, as you can see. <laughs> oh, so please. I don't have any fitness <laughs> stuff. I'm not tracking my steps at the moment or anything like that. But I think we do get to a point, you know, where it's just very overwhelming. You know, it's great to have your watch and your phone kind of working together to give you all this information. But I think there comes a point where it's just kind of information overload and then it's, you know, everything just kind of explodes. I think explodes. We, don't, we don't have the user experience down yet. The, sure. It doesn't right. really matter what data you gather, right? I mean, like, you obviously want some but it's about the user experience. I agree, I think that's one of the failings right now with Android Wear is that it doesn't really discriminate what information you get mm -hmm. to, your, to your wrist. Right. Um, it just sort of you know, force feeds it to you. Yeah. If there is a way to customize it you know, so that you get the information you need that you want, yeah. then I think it'll become a much more viable platform. And I think even the data it gathers for fitness, I mean, all it tells me is like, you walk this many steps, you reach your goal. I'm like, I don't care. I want to know how many miles I've walked, how many mm -hmm. miles I ran, how many miles I was on a bicycle, mm -hmm. or on an electric scooter right. sure. that goes for 20 miles on a charge. Well, there are some sponsors, companies sponsors. that are. <laughs> uh, but that was nice, right? yeah. nicely done. But anyway, uh, eco rico. Uh, so, but the point is, I think you know, I think the gathering the gathering the data and and. Bring it to the you know bring it to the user in an intelligent way is definitely smarts as well right. right and and I think it's a lot more limited to do that with just you know devices you have to unplug and plug in and all that and that's kind of where I'm going with this I think the um, other thing is uh, you know when you the ecosystems you look at them some of them like Garmin you know lets you like track your GPS while you're running or whatever exactly. like you know like so some people want that but some people just don't care right well actually Garmin is even. Uh, I think it was Garmin that we saw earlier that was uh, automatically tracking. So you're not, you don't have to tell it that you're going into this mode right. of running or walking. Uh, it's automatically determining based on your heart rate and Even all of the this sleep information. Too. Even the, sleep too. Because the Fitbit ones, I know the Surge, I think the Surge in particular, but they, they track your sleep. And I know the one problem we had, one of the, our writers reviewed it, 
Um, but he was actually just sitting on the couch and he was just laying there, you know, and he wasn't sleeping. He was just sitting watching TV, but he wasn't moving. Right. So it kind of fell into the sleep mode. And you can go back and tweak it manually after the fact. But, um, but having you know, a more like automated process you. is yeah, certainly for sure. easier for people to take the information and do something with it. Other, otherwise, you're kind of, you're putting too much effort into it. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds really lazy, <laughs> uh, but we are kind of lazy because, well, maybe not lazy, just busy, right? Yeah. We have so much going on in our lives. And of course, in the world that we live in today, it's just feeding constantly that we have to have it easy. But wouldn't you say, Mike, that uh, traditionally with uh, with new technologies like this, uh, we see a, an outpouring of information and, and uh, options for a new technology, and then we wind up pulling it back a little bit as we see what works and what doesn't. Yeah, I, I think it's a fair assessment. Um, you know, and wearables, uh, with any technologies, and especially wearables, you know, the key to its success is going to be how little it disrupts our daily patterns. Exactly. You know, I think that's one of the things that Apple's always gotten with its things. You know, it just, it doesn't disrupt your, what you've, you're accustomed to doing. Yes. And well, right now, I mean, right now wearables, uh, you know, we lo you know we, while we're wearing them, they're still sort of dis they're not as smoothly integrated into our daily lives as they right. should be. Well, uh, one thing that is being integrated into smart devices like wearables is gesture control, and I think that's probably where it lies. Uh, the possibility, at least, lies of being really fully integrated like that, so it's not interrupting ourselves, our yeah. lives. We, we talked to the, the folks from Mio this morning, mm -hmm. you know, with the armband, yeah. and it's it's almost, like you're saying, we don't want to get to the point where it's interrupting our daily lives, but I, I almost feel now I'm at the point where my wearables are my daily life, and if I don't have them, if I leave the house without my pebble, yeah. or something like Do that, you, you know, jitters? then I'm interrupted. Yeah, you I mean, there was the jitters, a couple you? months ago, I bartend twice a week, and I left the house, and I was, you know, at work, and I didn't have my pebble, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to be in this, place for eight hours and I'm not going to have my smartwatch on me and I was, you know, I was devastated but that because that's my daily routine now and that's my normal life yeah. you know so I get if you start wearing armbands and stuff like that where you're on the couch you know and I'm doing these things to change my TV channels and I don't have to move at all I don't have to reach for my remote I don't have to get off the couch you know it starts to get to a kind of an iffy spot of whether it's you know good for you or bad for you kind of thing but yeah sure it's helping you you know and it's doing all these things for you but it's what point do you get where it's kind of too much well, okay, so uh, this weekend we were actually live streaming the AT&T Hackathon mm -hmm. and uh, saw some really, really cool things come out of that. Uh, the Mio actually played a big part in something that I found very interesting. They took the Mio and they, um, create they you know has gesture control right but they added that to things like home automation so as you create a gesture as you lift up your arm it's going to ha use proximity sensors to know that you're kind of close to the garage door and it'll automatically open the garage door do this it'll automatically close the garage door things like that so you're seeing a potential of fitness bands gesture control, home automation, all of it kind of tying together into one. Yeah. I'm not I, completely sold on gestures. I mean, because that's, <laughs> that's, like, wait a that's, I mean, that's also disrupting your pattern. I mean, I don't want to have to, you know, walk to my front door and go like this. You Would know? you rather have to pull out your phone? No, but it, you shouldn't have to do that at all. You, sh you should just, it, and, and we're getting to it too with uh, the jawbone, where you just walk up to the door and it knows mm -hmm. it's you. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're seeing that yeah. there's some smart locks I saw on yes. the floor as well. Yeah, the one we had on stage earlier, you just tap, you just touch it, and it exactly. unlocks. Exactly. Yes. So no no gesture needed, you know. And it's not yeah. a fingerprint; so. it's using authentication through your phone. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's. I mean, that so are you are you are we saying that we don't want gesture control? That we don't want to be doing this all over the place? I'm sorry, sorry, Miriam, I'm not trying to hit <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not personally not a big fan. I don't think it's. Uh, I mean, there's also this whole craze right now about gestures in the car. Uh, I like physical. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. We do gestures in the car all the time. Yeah. I'm there's from Jersey. We do gestures all the time. There is, this, uh, there is this heads up display <laughs> add on you can put in your car that lets you do uh, things like take calls and, and, like, and like do gestures to mm -hmm. take call and, 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 and hang up. And I, I don't want that. I, I, want have that like on, I want buttons on my wheel. In fact, I would argue, and I'm very much into automotive stuff, mm -hmm. I love cars. And I love the Tesla. I was one of the first, you know, journalists to uh, that was not a car journalist to r drive the the Model S. Yeah. 
and I do not like the touch screen. I want physical buttons. I feel that there's, and this is what I love about Pebble. I don't having, know, Miriam. Having, are you, are you having 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 me up here? No, having <laughs> buttons Fired. gives you tactile feedback, yes, muscle does. memory without having to look. It is critical. When you're driving, you don't even want to have, right now you don't know if you're hitting the right button randomly mm -hmm. on the, whereas if you just touch it, you know exactly what button sure. you've done. And I that to me is a big deal. And when I walk into my house, I'd rather touch the lock and have some kind of fancy authentication through Bluetooth or the cloud, uh, but still have to touch the lock. There is a lot of distraction yeah. with, with the gesture yeah. and the, the soft, you know, the, the uh, touch. And screens. it's the same with voice control. Like some things really work well with voice control, yeah. but you know, I don't. And again, it, I think people think of there's this tendency because a lot of companies have taken the phone and shrunk it down to the rest to think that it's going to behave like a phone, but it shouldn't, and it. It won't. Like a, a smartwatch or, or a wearable band is, is basically going to take some of the things your phone does and do them very, very easily and very quickly mm -hmm. for you. And it's never going to replace your phone in the same way as your phone does not replace your tablet or your laptop. Yeah. All right, yes. so let's move on to another way that, uh, that uh, wearables are coming into our daily lives, clothes. All uh -huh. of our clothes are starting to potentially have this fitness tracking and uh, biometrics. Biometrics, too, right? uh, obviously, um, Under Armour did a lot with uh, the Olympics and Olympians, and they're starting to do even more from a consumer's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to me, guys. What uh, What do you I'm, think? I'm meeting with a company tomorrow. Actually, I'm meeting with. Um, under Armour tomorrow as oh, well, yeah. okay. as well, and there's another company. I think it's Ohm Signal. Oh yeah, yeah, Ohm Signal. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's the wave of the future in terms of sports mm -hmm. technology. I think. Um, another thing I also saw here at the show is uh, little devices that measure concussions. Yes. Um, so there's in like the head helmets. caps and mm -hmm. things like that. Even a mouth guard too. Okay. Um, so it's really interesting to see the way technology is being implemented uh, in terms of wearables and all sorts of aspects. Yeah. I think it's very interesting because we're seeing on, on the clothes uh, aspect, we're seeing things like Athos, which is uh, a, a sensor, a device that you put in your clothes. Uh, I think they have shirts and they have uh, pants versus something like uh, the Under Armour stuff where it's the material, ohm signal is, is material as well. The sensors are embedded into the clothes. So, that actually presents a different kind of problem when you can't, when it comes to pricing, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an expensive piece of, uh, of, of wear. Yeah, we talked to Athos this morning on the show and there's, they, they sell the garments, so they have, I think they have shorts and then capris and a shirt and they okay. sell those for $99, but to buy the actual sensor that you use in them is $199. So just in the door, you know, for a shirt, you're looking at a $300 shirt, but then you can move the sensor around. So if you buy the pants for another $100, you can move that, you know, but if you want to use the shirt and the pants at the same time, you have to have two sensors. So that's, you know, you're going to the gym in like a $600 outfit. Right, you know? so that's <laughs> just the to thing. sweat, right? <laughs> you know, like the amount of clothes, I know if you buy expensive clothes, like if you're buying the Lululemon yoga pants, you know, they're expensive right. and if you buy a lot, you're spending a lot of money, but you know, you just go someplace cheap and you're buying gym clothes. Like you're not going to spend $200, you're not going to spend $300, you probably won't even spend $100. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say, but in like the professional sense for sports and athletes in the Olympics and things like that, I definitely think there's well, a place. Well, it's worth because, it for that. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're training and they're learning mm -hmm. things and that's, you know, that's their full-time job. Like it's helping them improve what they do and it's making them better and it's it's definitely useful in that if space. If the price were down and it didn't, you know, didn't require a $600 outfit just to walk around and get your, your your temperature, your heartbeat, all of the health information on a daily basis, would that be more information than you guys want? <laughs> well, I think it depends on what you're doing, right? I think mm. that's why the professional sports sure. where they can actually throw out the uniform at the end of the of the, the game, basically, mm -hmm. and they do, right? I uh, mean, that it's, I, I would that, take you it. know, <laughs> like, being able to, um, to put the sensors in there, embed them so that they're disposable mm -hmm. makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, you know, consumer grade, you need to be able to wash this hundreds, thousands of yes, times, exactly. right? And and you know, I'm most not sure of them, the sensors will right, most of them have the uh, stuff that comes out, the brain comes off, but the sensors are generally embedded and yeah. I don't I don't know if that's something viable. And you're right, like other than working out right now, what do you I, or maybe some healthcare applications, yeah. what do you really need uh, to measure that you mm -hmm. can't measure with just simple uh, yeah. devices like, you know, a smartwatch or a band or you know, I don't know. Like, well, for example, uh, who was it we had on here earlier? Forgive me, I'm just gonna go up here. Cardio. 
um, they have EKG monitors, mm -hmm. right? And so if you, and they're, they're measuring the amount of sweat that your body is producing in order to tell you if your, um, if your stress level is too high. Right. So that's actually that's a very cool. good health benefit, sure. mm -hmm. uh, that if that were able to be embedded into your clothes, that could be something that you wear all day and get that information, maybe calm down a little, maybe stop, maybe take an eco rico as opposed to walking. <laughs> you, know, I don't know. you don't, you don't, you don't, really need, you don't even need to do that. Like there's, there's a band by a company called, uh, it's, it's a ring by a company called mood metric that yeah. measures your, your emotional state, I guess. So you, you know, there's other products. And I think to me, I think it's going to be really hard to get wearables in kind of a mainstream way, unless they're highly, highly integrated mm -hmm. with things that we're familiar with. And that's kind of like why I really like dig what Withings is doing. Even though I, w I want notifications. For me, the killer app, of the reason I wear a smartwatch is for notifications. Yes. Yeah, for me and as well. I filter them exactly. so that I only get the ones I want. And mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten to a place where Android Wear does the job, Pebble does the job, and those are the, my go-to right now. Maybe mm -hmm. Apple will do the job, but I'm not really an iPhone user anyway. So we'll see. But I think until people are comfortable, it's like Google Glass, right? It's really cool. I'm an explorer. I have it. I love it. But at the same time, I don't see a purpose for it. Yeah. And the battery life isn't good enough. And then uh, this whole social stigma around it now. But in vertical markets like the oil industry and uh, pilots or people who do uh, maintenance on aircraft or, sure. or like surgeons even, I can totally see a point where you put a wearable kind of pair of glasses that are your professional gear mm -hmm. that's, you know, embedded in your in your daily life sure. as, a, as a pro, as what you do. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, my awesome cool glasses that I love right now, if they had a completely integrated electronics that could do a heads up display and, and stuff and run for two days on a battery, then I would, cons I think then we could be where, you know, maybe where the smartwatches are now with glasses, but we're so far from that right now. How far it's do you gonna, think we are? Oh, th two, three years, so five years, you know. It's going to happen, but, mm -hmm. but I think we're not quite there yet. And until we have that, I don't think glasses are really going to be a, a viable wearable you right. know, for the consumer grade. But I think watches are like, we're at the tipping point of like, I think 2015, is going to be smartwatch central, and I actually isn't, think it's going to eclipse. Last year, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. That's what we said last year. <laughs> yeah, true. no, but last, now we're really last, there. Right? So last year, we, I knew it wasn't going to be last year. I, if you hadn't asked oh, me last year, you I might have, have Adam, but she didn't. Oh. I would have said smartwatches are are finally getting viable to the early adopter last mm -hmm. year. I think this year we have the potential to see smartwatches adopted by a much broader range of people. Okay. Hundred dollar smartwatches are going to be commonplace. Pebble already does that with an entry level model. Uh, we're going to see, you know, tons of Android Wear, and Android Wear, mm -hmm. the second generation of it, is going to come out sometime halfway through the year. Apple's going to get it even more in the face of everyone, even mm -hmm. though it's going to be much yes. more expensive. So I think it's, it's likely to become a thing. And then, you know, people now have the option to not wear something that has a display, per se, on, mm -hmm. on their wrists. Right. I want to see something like Withings, but you know where the date counter normally would be? Uh -huh. Show me like how many notifications are sitting on my phone, maybe. Oh, no, no, and I so, couldn't handle yeah. that. I so I go like, oh crap, that. I really should check now. Yeah, yeah. See, and then it's you have gotten to wear up the to 52. Yeah, you, then you wear the other thing and it shows your stress level shoot up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. that's really true. true. <laughs> but I mean, that's reality, right? That's what we go through, right? Like in a professional yeah. uh, reporting environment, mm -hmm. if you have too many emails sitting in your inbox that you haven't checked yet, you start freaking out. And that's, mm -hmm. that's our jobs. I have so, I think I have about 13, no, I think it's about 24,000 unread in the inbox. So, so and you don't that care stress now. level would, uh, would go higher. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think rings, rings, there's a lot of potential with rings, there's potential with bands, whether they're watches or actual bands. Do you think 3D like printing? Clothes, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure clothes are going to be a big thing consumer right. grade yet. Do you think 3D printing is, is going to be able to, in the future, uh, integrate into the whole wearable? you know, smart devices? Sure. I guess so, you know. Um, it seems uh, viable at some point, right? I think, I, mean, I think 3D printing is the same stage as wearables. Yeah, almost. I think 3D yeah. printing <laughs> is going to be at some point viable, not just for, for wearables, but for all kinds of things that we want to produce ourselves really mm -hmm. in, sh in small quantities that redefine who we are. Sure. I think the thing about 3D printing is that if you want to make a, you know, a shell for your, uh, like a case for your phone or a shell for your uh, s smart ring that has a different <laughs> color every day of the week and maybe has sparkles because you're going to a party, you can 3D print it right there just before you leave the party yeah. in about you know <laughs> an hour and you start it early and you it, you finish, you put it on, you run out and exactly. you have something just for that day. It's, it's crazy. That's I think gonna be the, the kind of life we're gonna live at some point. And I think it's because people are dying for customization. They really want to be able to 
have, you know, smart well, everybody wants to be an individual. The first smartwatch manufacturer, I've been saying this for a while, I said this when I was at Pebble too, the first smartwatch manufacturer that can provide different styles of uh, sizes, shapes, materials, colors, and uh, even, even beyond that, uh, can provide choices of displays because mm -hmm. right now you really have to choose between color OLED mm -hmm. and kind right. of an e-paper like display Correct. like the Pebble does because one gives you great battery life and great outdoor uh, readability but this gives you things like color coding notifications mm -hmm. so really at a glance I can say it's Facebook or or uh, you know Gmail just but yeah. should looking at the color which is sure. awesome right so once you know that's what people want they want that level of customization because right now the reason I think a lot of people are not adopting smartwatch they look at this they're like this massive and it, it runs what, a day on a battery? Yep. Like, I don't want that. I yeah. need to charge one more thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, they look at this and like, ah, oh, it's just a watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the size of that a little bit better than, you know, these. I, I have a I have a difficulty with the size of smartwatches mm -hmm. because I, as you see, I'm only wearing <laughs> one piece of jewelry and I don't like jewelry, right? It's a smart right? Ring, right? So I, I think uh, I'm looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. uh, the smaller devices it's come. It's your Wonder yeah. Woman smart ring? My, my Wonder Woman smart ring that's <laughs> yes. 3D printed, by the way. Freak, freaking lasers? Really? Yeah, it is. Nice. <laughs> freaking lasers. It doesn't have freaking lasers yeah. yet. <laughs> so uh, let's it's talk about, about the, the future a little bit. We've got all of this data, all of this information, um, and what are we going to do with it? How is it going to translate from device to device to device? And are, I mean, obviously there's the cloud, but how's that all going to play out? What do you guys see? Well, if you want to go first, I, I don't know. I need to time out for that one. I, <laughs> too much in there. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, it's. I think this also goes to sort of connected home as well. Right. Right. Um, how can the data we gather from a smartwatch? You know, inform say what we buy and what goes in our fridge, or um, you know what we cook that for the evening. You know, maybe there's something in you know so the smartwatch says, okay, you had a rough night of sleeping. You know, maybe you want a little stronger coffee in the morning. Maybe you should have you know. Or it'll change say, your appointments. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Things like that. Yeah. Start emailing it's, people saying I'm I'm going to skip the first one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's all about being able to really take that data and you know make it actionable in various ways. To me, I think what all this data gives us, a lot of it is crap, right? Also, a lot of the data right now isn't being mined properly, like in the sense that we're, we don't have algorithms to take that data and make it into something significant that is tangible and gives us something to make a decision. It's all about making decisions. Right. The reason I wear a notification band, essentially a smartwatch, is because I want to get notifications that are critical and make decisions on them. The reason I look at my steps is because I want to decide, like, have I walk, like I know I want to reach a minimum alarm of walking every day, and if I can get an idea, just a coarse idea of whether I'm reaching that goal or not, it's, it's, I know it's going to make me healthier, yeah. you know? And then the, eventually when we have things like calorific input and we can like take a picture <laughs> of our food and go like, this is magically what, you know, this is bad for you, this is good for you. But, but what, I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, at <laughs> some point, I think there's a huge potential with wearables and even phones in terms of nutrition. And yeah. once we get to that, it's again, it gives you the option to make a decision about the food you're about to eat, right? Right. That's it. That's again, all it is, it's decision making. All of that information and all of these different, every single watch, every single app has a different proprietary system based mm -hmm. underneath it. Uh, sure. Under Armour, I, I keep bringing them up because they're doing some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Under Armour, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to go see it, they're building a system, uh, that an API really, that all of these um, companies will be able to tie into and they're hoping to be able to create the uh, underlying platform so that everybody can kind of jump on board to something as opposed to all the different proprietary systems going here, going there. Um, do you think that'll work? I I don't know. I would love it I, to work. I mean, I, I think the big thing for me, aside from the wearables, obviously that none of my stuff plays nice with each other, is in my house where you know, I have my stuff. Sonos, yeah. I have my Philips Hue, I have a Nexia system that I've had forever. I have three different brands of Wi-Fi cameras spread all over the house, you know, but I don't have just one single solitary app on my phone where I can go in and just, you know, it says home and every single thing in my house is there. You know, if I want to 
change the color of my lights, I have to use one app. If I want to play my Sonos, I have to use another app. If I want to check on the baby, I have to use another app. Yeah. If I want to look in my garage, if I want to it's open annoying. my garage door, everything's on. all over the place. You know, and I, I feel at the moment it's just going to get worse because more and more people are coming out with more and more products, right. you know, and we're getting further away from bringing everything together. So it's going to be a long time before it comes all the way around that somebody pulls everything together and makes and it, it has a lot to be, easier. I mean, it has to be a big boy to be able to do that, correct? Oh, for sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, oh. okay. I, I think that IoT is kind of like, it holds the key to this. Because I think mm -hmm. IoT includes cars, homes, wearables, mobile devices in general. And I think it, we need to find a way like we need to continue, the, the whole discussion around net neutrality, I, I'm sorry to bring it up, is really a big deal because it means that we need to continue fighting for the ability for all these different products to interoperate. I know there's a tendency for us to kind of pick ecosystems like Apple, Google, maybe Microsoft, Amazon's a big ecosystem. Yeah. But I think all these companies, yes, they should compete because that's how they innovate and I want that to continue, but I th also think they need to cooperate a little bit more. And you know, when I see Google not writing a single Windows Phone app, I'm like, come on. Like, I know I know you could, and I think it would be beneficial to everyone if you did. Right. And, and and that vexes me, because I'm not a Windows Phone user particularly, although I like them, but it's, it's just that kind of resistance mm -hmm. to interoperability that's really critical. Mm -hmm. And I think that for all this IoT, cars, homes, phones, wearables to work, we need to be really, conscious as consumers to not necessarily invest in just one ecosystem. Even though it's really easy, we need to keep banging it in their heads to the, the companies that make these products that we buy, that we want them to work with one another. Yeah. And create and standards around IoT interconnectivity, whether it be the protocols or the standards or whatever, so that all this stuff can continue to work together, mm -hmm. right? It is up to the consumers to make that known and, you know, to that, the big that is companies, why, you know, that's like, for sure. With Pebble, one of the great things is that it's iOS and Android compatible. Mm -hmm. You know, very few smartwatches are. And why is that even an issue? Like, mm -hmm. I should be able to buy an Android Wear device and use it on my iPhone without even thinking about right. it. Sure. This is kind of ridiculous. Imagine a, a, a car that only worked with shell gas. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you're getting when you buy music from, you know, like certain services, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like, are you kidding? Or videos, so music has kind of gotten better. But like, if you buy a video from iTunes, mm -hmm. you cannot play it on anything than an Apple device. Yeah. Like, whereas music, at least you can still extract. To me, that's ridiculous. And that's what we <laughs> need to fix. <laughs> because cars do not just run on Shell or our Exxon or whatever, right? Are, are, you, are you encouraging our, our lovely viewers here to just torrent everything? I think, you know, if you are <laughs> an early adopter and a tech savvy person, like you're most likely to be watching this right now, I really strongly <laughs> encourage you to be to be involved in all the ecosystems and yes. use multiple devices, change phones every other day. You go from an iPhone to an Android phone. Yep. If you can afford it, do it, because it really makes your life better. You can really start understanding all the technical issues that we have out there that need to be resolved. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just going to make us a better place if we can do that. We do have quite the future ahead of us, and yes. uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. I'm looking forward to see what you guys want. I want you to guys to leave a comment below. We all want to hear about it. And like Miriam was, was saying, it is your job as a consumer to let the companies know what you're looking for and what you want. Uh, so don't forget about that. Uh, while while you're buying devices. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming in and looking at this whole space. I mean, everybody is uh, doing it back here on the show floor. And 2015, is it the year of wearables again? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think it's gonna it's gonna be the I was year. looking for like a year. Yeah, it's gonna be the year. It's gonna be <laughs> smartwatches definitely. I think in a year we're we're gonna really start seeing smartwatches be like the you know, the the, the time when iPhone and Android were starting to, you know, encroach on this dumb phone <laughs> world. I think we're going to see a lot of that. And it, it, you know, it might not necessarily just be a watch, like, you know, it could be something else. Like, it could be like a fitness tracker that has some intelligence with a display on it. For sure. All right. Uh, Adam. Adam. <laughs> Sorry, I forget sometimes too. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Adam, Mike, and Miriam, thank you guys so much. Uh, again, make sure you're watching geekbeat.tv slash CES Live for all the coverage this week. I'm going to. <laughs> Stop me and take over. <laughs> All right, guys, we're off. <laughs> <laughs>